can't even do that. Now, no seal, even a captive seal, which you work to work with, will allow you to do that. So, Brendan, there's something a little bit special about him. Now, he was taken back into the sanctuary in Ireland to be rehabilitated. <laughs> so he was taken into the sanctuary for rehabilitation once again on the third time. However, while he was in there, he became attached to one member of staff. He really got on with them, followed them around, wanted to know where they were at all times. However, this isn't good for a seal that you want to be re uh, re releasing. So the decision was made actually, <coughs> Brendan should put, uh, be moved over to uh, England to our sister sanctuary in Scarborough. Now, in Scarborough, Brendan was once again rehabilitated. All was going well until, once again, after being there for a while, he took to another member of staff, <laughs> followed them around, wouldn't leave them alone. And while he was there, it was found that he has got a few health complications, such as stunted growth, he's also his kidneys don't work properly. And so, after a long discussion, uh, thought process, the decision was made that actually Brendan is really better off in captivity, where he can get treatment for his problems, and also because, as you've seen, He's so used to humans that it's unbelievable. He would, he'd rather, we've had him out on here on the side, tickling his stomach, rubbing his belly. He's a lot happier out with us on the side than he is actually swimming around with Laura. So, the decision was made that he should stay in captivity and actually come up here to the Scottish Sea Life Sanctuary where he can be company for Laura. Now, the reason for moving him up here Apart from being company for Laura and himself, is because in Scarborough he was actually being hired, housed with five adult male seals. Now, five adult male seals, they were bullying Brendan. As you see, and as I mentioned, he's got stunted growth. He's between two to three years old. Laura's four, he should at least be her size, if not a little bit bigger, being the male of the species. So he was really getting out competed for food. So we decided he would move up here. He's been here with us now for, must be coming on for four months. So he'll spend the rest of his life here with Laura and with us at the Scottish Sea Life Sanctuary. Now as well as having these two here in the sanctuary, we also have a few rescue and rehabilitate seal and pups. Now we rescue and rehabilitate both species I've already spoken about, the common and the grey seal. But, as you can probably imagine, we do have busier times when the seal comes aboard. Now for the common seals, this is June, July and August, and then for the grey seals, it is shortly following this, November, December and January. So these are our busiest months here in the sanctuary. However, whether it be common or grey seals, they are fed on a milk formula every four hours through the day and night. To begin with, now when they come in, we approximately age, give them an age by whether they've still got their umbilicus attached, if they have teeth or not, what size they are. And then once they reach between two to three weeks old, approximately, we slowly stop the milk and start to introduce fish into their diet. Small amounts of fish will replace the milk, and slowly but surely, they'll be completely feed off the milk and off the fish. Now once we get to this stage, we can then slowly start to increase the amount of fish. Once they get to be eating whole fish like Laura and Brendan have done here this afternoon, and they're actually taking it for themselves, they can be moved out here to meet Laura and Brendan. Now Laura and Brendan have become two very good little teachers out here. They can teach the pups a little bit of seal etiquette. Not much, but a little bit of seal etiquette. So what I mean is, what will be and what won't be tolerated by another seal. Also, the most important lesson of all is how to compete against each other. Because, as you can imagine, out there in the wild, they won't just be another seal or another couple of seals. They'll be all 
a large number of seals and all the other different animals that want the same food. So Laura and Brendan typically teach the seal pups how to compete. Then, once they reach between 35 to 40 kilos in weight, they aren't on, sorry, they aren't on any medication whatsoever, it's all gone so. <laughs> <laughs>
we moved on to the whistle, and then we just slowly phased the whistle out, and we started with the, uh, just using the stick. Now there are two reasons for doing it. One, it'd be easy for us to come in every. Sorry, I thought the seat was really not working. There's only gloves in there. Come out around. There's two reasons. One, it'd be very easy for us to come out here every single day and fish in our bucket and just throw it around. We like to know that each seal is getting their fair share, even though Brendan occasionally, as you've seen, might have defeated that. But all, and it also keeps their mind back. <laughs> we, we, we change the behaviours. We get them to do different things. Not every day, like today was just coming up and touching. It's a little bit difficult with Brendan at the moment because he's still there. As I said, he's a wild seal. It's very hard. I mean, it is very hard to get him to pick it up, but Brendan's doing really well. He loves this blue stick. As you saw, I walked just a cruise with it. I didn't even have a bucket in my hand. He wanted, he wanted the blue stick. So that's the first reason keep their mind nice and active and make sure that they get their fair share of food. Now the second reason is if Laura was, wasn't stealing Brendan's fish and she actually had to work for her food, we've got her to the point where we can lay this stick out on, towards the back of one of those islands and she'll actually come out and touch her nose on the end and hold it there. Then, this is where the second half starts, we can go down the body with our hands. We can run our hands over our back, we can hold our flippers, look at them. We were slowly getting towards our head. At the moment we were still just sort of looking round and looking into our eyes. But it is, what it is, it's a, it's a mini health check. It allows us to get close to the seal. Not only is it a mini health check, but that trust relationship becomes a little bit more. As you've seen, Brendan doesn't need to know what his trust relationship, he doesn't care. <laughs> He'll come up and see anybody. Rather than us saying, say for example, it doesn't happen, but if one of them got caught with us, and they had a cut, and they maybe caught themselves on a bit of the rock or something, we'd go bring, in, bring the vet and say, right, well, let's swim around the pole. There's a, there's a cut, we can't see how big it is or anything. You're not really helping the, the vet to need to know what they need to break. If we get them out, we can go, right, well, it's not this big. This deep, it helps the vet a lot more to say, right, we're well, coming out, we'll clean it up and then sort it out. So, there are some, quite a few reasons, but the two main ones are health check and uh, give them something to think about, give them something to do every single day. Because, as you can imagine, I mean, we do put um, treats in here for like frozen blocks of herring and things like that. Both of them have learned, and I, mean, I don't have to hide this. Wait in the water. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of going by the by now. We've also, unfortunately, you won't get to see me doing it today. We've got a big fishing rod that we made, ring handle, big long bit of rope. We tie a fish at the bottom of it. We would run around the pools like that. There's fish on the rope, and the seals love it. They chase after it, thinking, oh, the seal's going to learn from the seal. The fish is getting away from it. So we do do a lot of other enrichment for them, but thing that we can do day to day, even if we are busy with possible other things that are going around in the sanctuary, is using this new stick to train them. Okay? Anyone have questions? Do you have any puppies here at the moment? No, we don't have any at the moment. It is, I know everybody would like to see young seal pups. They are cute, I mean you can see from the wall that we're all there. But we always sort of Thank goodness when we don't have them in because it means they're out there where they belong, they've got their mothers, they're healthy, they only come in here if there's something wrong. So if you have a rescue a rescue car that picks them up or do you just just somebody, Sorry, just, you just, somebody just bring them in a car? Well we've got um, we work with the SSPCA, which is the RSPCA up in Scotland. We um, we have our own van. Like if someone rings up and says, Oh, there's a seal but we think it's you know, we think it's in danger, it's in trouble, or whatever. We can then go out in our own van and um, have a look at it, make our own decision. We have had people bring them in before. We've had um, people bring them across, send them across from Moult on the ferry. The ferry master doesn't mind. He, he's got a special area now set aside for seal pumps. Uh, I've had to meet the, meet the ferry at eight o'clock at night. The last ferry coming in, uh, waiting for a seal pump. Uh, quite surreal, you drive up, you, 
and all these people stood around and to see the van because it's got all the sea life badges on it and they're like, oh, oh, what are you doing, what are you doing? I've come to get a seal off the ferry. <laughs> they don't ask any more after that. <laughs> it's quite an unusual thing to say. Just one of the things to do with the seal, but this tank in the uh, square in there, the big open tank, the jack uh, salmon in there. Right at the top. The one right at the top. The one, or the one with the waterfall. Uh, the one that's uh, in the... Uh, in the play. Oh, the big black. You mean the big black yeah. tank? Yeah. That's trout. That's trout. Yeah, that's that's trout. Sea yeah, it's a mixture of rainbow trout and sea trout. And they have farm ones. Yes. Um, yeah, that's why they are. <laughs> like, it's not a size. How old would they be, that one? Teens. They're not that old. Well, they'd eat, they'd eat anything. They'd eat meat for going there, so it's enough, yeah. Them and the cod. Are they all the best on top of the Yes. I mean, we, uh, if you look on our um, recipe board, in this, they're just next in the uh, opposite pen, where the hole is. You'll see, yes, the majority of the columns are great. There are two that are on there, which are actually included in now the hooded seal, uh, two, the names of the two are Inga and Cleo, if you'd like to go and have a look. But uh, the hooded seal is found on the north coast of Scotland, uh, miles and miles around the city. But uh, just, so just like humans, they are a lot of them, they have to be got lost. The seals do things as well, they get lost, and they never know what the sky is about. Maybe it's one of the seals, they take out the boats.